I don't think Hovac's gonna show up. Me neither. You think we should start the video ourselves? Yeah, we should. Welcome to my channel, and in today's video, I'm introducing you to my good friend Derek Jones, an amazing bass guitar. Bass guitarist. <laughs> bass guitar eater. Bass guitar. No, he's a bass guitar. An amazing bass guitar. We're gonna fix him today. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, do I need fixing. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, and in today's video I'm going to introduce you to my good friend Derek Jones, an amazing guitar player, guitar. violinist, <laughs> flute player, harmonica, <laughs> trombone, trombone. <laughs> armpit, <Pianist. It's> amazing, <laughs> wrestler, wrestler. <laughs> gymnast, pasta maker. I don't <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, and in today's video I'm going to introduce you to my good friend Derek Jones. He is an amazing bassist and a personal bass doctor. Every time our bass needs fixing, we bring it on to him, and he fixes it. Hey, thanks Ellen. It's great to be here, everybody. Um, yeah, today we're going to work on Ellen's really cool short-scale Stingray bass. And I'm just going to show you guys how I approach you know, doing setups for my own bases and, you know, being on the road as much as I was and now with Cirque du Soleil for 18 years, I still work on all my own bases and, and set them up. So the first thing I want to do, well, I'll show you the tools first. So I have a couple of screwdrivers. I have a feeler gauge. Um, I have a capo. Um, here's a string action gauge and um, a hex wrench toolkit, but Ellen likes to call this the finger chopper. <laughs> so that's its new nickname because I think that's great. <laughs> so you can hold that. <laughs> Don't chop your fingers off. Um, I want a clip on tuner. This would be great. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tune up the bass and uh, make sure it's correct tension because the strings need to be at a certain tension to get all these measurements right. So let's turn that on and then I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to just make sure it's a little flat. So we'll get it all tuned up. Oh. Uh, anyway, so we got that tuned up now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this capo and I'm gonna put it, you know, right behind the uh, first fret. And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna hold the string down because you need three hands to do this. So the capo is my third hand. And I'm gonna hold that down by the 12th fret. And you'll see different people do different things. Some people, like to hold the last fret. Some people like to hold the 17th fret. None of it is wrong. I've just found for me personally, and I think Ellen likes this too, is that if I do the measurement from here, 12th fret, and I measure uh, between the 6th fret and the string, and I, I, the feeler gauge is 0 .008. And this is by a company called Music Nomad. They make a bunch of great tools and stuff. It's really cool. So what I do is I take this and I put it right underneath. And if you look, Ellen, you'll see that the string will slightly move up and down because it's touching. You'll see, it's hard to see, uh -huh. but you kind of feel it. That's a little bit too much movement for me. So what I'm going to do is take the hex wrench or the finger choppers <laughs> and I'm going to um, grab this. And there's a, this has a um, truss rod adjuster right here. And I think, oh, I need the uh, smaller version, smaller hex wrench. I don't, I don't, it's like you're barely moving it, but you're like, oh, wait, that's too much movement. Yeah, yeah, it's very subtle. It's very, you do very small movement. So I'm just going to take this and loosen the truss rod just like that much, very little. But after you adjust the truss rod, you have to retune. Because what happens with the truss rod is I loosened it, so that means that the tension pulling on this neck is going to make the neck pull this direction. So we want to make sure that um, the strings aren't flat. And most likely they aren't because it was just a little bit of... But um, they, they actually moved just a hair. Yeah, they did. Sometimes you'll notice that it will be more of the bass side that gets flatter than the treble side. So then I'm going to put the capo back on and I'm going to test this again. Holding at the 12th fret and in between the 6th fret and the string. And I see no movement. Yeah, it's very, 
Okay, it's perfect see. right there. Yeah, right there. See, now there's none. And it's just barely touching, which is what you want. You want it barely touching. So now that you've done that, now we can take it off and we need to, uh, I'm going to turn on the Mark Base amp back here. Should I turn it on? Please, could you turn it on for me and hand me, hand me that cable? Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. That, that one right, yeah, turn that on Let's... and hand me that cable right over there. Oh, do it before it turns on. And then before you go, turn on, turn on, you know where the mute button is? Right next to that yellow button on the far right? Yeah. Click it down. Cool, perfect, okay. So now we have the bass on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, intonate the bass, which what you do is you use um, a screwdriver and this needs to be moved in different directions. And so what I do, and I've been doing this for years, so I do it by yourself. I, you can use a tuner, which I would use too, but sometimes I just like to hear the note. And that's a little sharp, just slightly. So what you do is you take your, your Phillips head screwdriver, there's a little Phillips head screw right here, and you turn it and watch. When that, when I turn it, that saddle moves backwards. So when the note in the 12 fret is sharp, you move it backwards because you're making the string longer. And then if it's flat, you move the saddle forward to make the string shorter, which, which will sharpen it up. So now I'm going to retune again. When, when you were moving it slowly, I thought uh -huh. there was going to be a jump scare, like the string was going to pop or something. <laughs> no, no jump scares here. So then I'm going to play it again. And that's pretty good. And then I check this one. And I do some like odd. And so that's fine. And then I'm going to do this and do the same thing with and then I'll play some. That's a little flat, so I'm gonna bring that forward just a bit. And you'll notice that that will go forward just a bit like that. And now we'll tune this back up. Get it. Tuner on, it's right there. <laughs> You're right. I should just turn the tuner on. I forgot. <laughs> I do that. I That's why that Ellen's here to remind me to turn on the tuner because I'm like <laughs> in my own head now. So okay, we'll turn that on, and now I'm going to listen to the note, and it's slightly sharp now. So I'm going to bring it just a little bit back, like that. Tune it up again, and you just continue to do this. It's a little tedious, I know, but once you get it set up, it's really great because then you can play in tune all over the neck. That's pretty good. So then we'll do this note. I'm learning, currently learning how to uh, fix a bass guitar even though I'm not going to do it, you are. <laughs> Well, you know, it's always good, you know, when, when everyone should know how to do this because it's pretty easy. Once you get used to doing it, it's pretty easy to do. And if you're ever in a situation where you're not, uh, when you're somewhere where there's no one around that knows how to do it, it's always good that you know how to do it. Be you know, so. Either way, either way, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna remember all this. No, no, no. That's why, you know, you can always call me. I'll be right over. But, but, um, if you, but you'll have it on video now so you can watch it and, and you won't have to remember it. Personal doctor. Personal doctor, personal base doctor. Okay, so now we're gonna listen to that. Those cost hundreds. <laughs> Millions. 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 Billions. Billions. Okay, so that's in tune. Now, now what I do when I get the three in tune is I play a something like that, which is fifths. And I see where that sounds. And I can play some like and I can play. When chords. I like chords like this because it, if it's really in tune, it sounds really nice. So then we'll do the last one. What were you gonna say? Uh, when you when you said something about frets, I remember I suddenly remembered something very random. What's that? <laughs> is that my bass is probably one of the shortest basses I have, considering it's a short scale. 
but yes. all of my other short scales uh -huh. and sometimes even full scales, well not full scales, but all my other short scales are actually look bigger and are actually taller than this one, uh -huh. but have less frets. This one has... Oh, right, right, because this one has... 20... Um, 22. 22 frets. That one didn't make it to 20. <laughs> right, because that, that's where the old fender... Yeah, the yeah. bite base. The bite base, right. Yeah. That's got 19. Yeah. 18. 19, I could yeah. barely play the... Met frets. I could barely play Metallica for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> um, that's why I had to do it on this one. It's like my, my fingers would have to, it's like playing over here. Right. Yeah. And it's nice because you can actually reach this note. So now that I have them all, then I play, I'll play stuff like this. And that all sounds really in tune now. So when I'm playing. Now we just got to check the action, which is the the uh, height of the string away from the fingerboard. You don't want it so close that it's buzzing like crazy, but you don't want it so far away that it's... So on a short scale bass, I would I would set it... I Here's, I take this... Um, Razor. This, you have this fret guru, <laughs> number two, precision setup and evaluation gauge. And um, it has 64th uh, on the bottom. And I place it on the 12th fret, and I just look over here, and it's set at 7 64ths. And, and that feels pretty good. Um, so, and, th and the, the low one is set at six, which is a little low. But what we can do is we can try and lower that to six, because I, I think on a short scale bass, like one of my short scale basses, I like, I like it set from six sixty fourths to seven sixty fourths. And then I'll show you how I measure the, the radius. So I'm going to lower that a bit. How does this work? What does it measure? It measures the space from the bottom of the fret, uh, top of, pardon me, the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. Hmm. So let's see. So I'm measuring at the 12th fret, and I'm measuring the space between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string, and that's about where I want it now, six. And I'm going to retune, and that. Okay, that's fine. And then, what's that? <laughs> it would sound good because it's tuned now. Right. You'd be able to do all that stuff. And this is at seven. And then this one is going to be um, at seven. And this one's at seven. I'm, I'm going to lower this one just a hair just to keep it between six and seven. And then I think that's a pretty good, because you want to have the the string, the bridge match the radius of the fingerboard. Each fingerboard has its own radius. I think this is a 12, but I, I, I'd have to check it. Um, but um, All I just see is wood, press, pull, sound. Right, but to get it to feel right, you have to also know radius, action, intonation, and Truss or I, you know, the, 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 the angle of the neck and the relief, what they call relief of the neck. If you like yeah. your neck more straight or if you like it more curved. It's so little. And I think, you know, that's pretty much how to do it. You know, you can set up the pickup height, um, if, but I, I think this one sounds pretty good the way the height is, you know. And, oh, and that, you just, that, that's it? Thought we were going through the whole operation. <laughs> right. Just, oh, we're going to fix this vase. Just take out all of its inner organs. Just <laughs> maneuver everything. Voila. Voila. Easy. It's pretty easy. easy. I mean, you, but now when you play, you, when you play, it's, it's intonated with itself. Wait, it's ready now? It's ready now. So you want to check it out? Yes. Okay. Do you want the tuner on it or, or no? There you go. It's hard to play with a... With a, yeah, let me move this, there you go. My thumb kind of hurts. Oh, I know. Yeah. You, she burned her thumb.
do you like the the way the strings feel? Do some yeah, do, do the strings feel too low, or do they feel fine? They feel fine. Good. It's hard <laughs> over here. Very cool. Yeah. So that's pretty much how you got to do it, and then and then you know you uh, put it back? just a, yeah you can put it back, and then you can. Um, once you know what your what your measurements are, then then you can um, you can make sure measure it. You know, um, every once in a while. Here, I'll give you this. Another good thing to always do when you're changing strings and all that stuff is to make sure all these little screws here are tight because sometimes they vibrate and they get a little loose, and so you just kind of check them out. And also the screws. This has six in the back of the neck. You just kind of. Make sure they're snug because same thing over time, vibrations and everything, they get a little loose and you really want to have a snug fit for your neck. Like each one of these is just a hair loose and now it's, now it's all set and then you don't have to worry about them getting really loose because you don't want to have a strap fall off or, you know, like, like that come out and you drop your base on the floor yeah. and uh, all that. Uh, you know when... You have like a, you buy a new base or you get a new base shipped and you uh, there's like a thing you have to peel on the pick guard yes. or on the back. Yes. I wish once I peel it, I could just undo it and peel it again. Put it back on and <laughs> just it. just put it back on and get the same sen sensation. <laughs> it's so, just so sad. Yeah, you you could just have people send you pick guards with plastic on them and yeah. stuff. Because she, nice. she likes to pull plastic. I was watching just, her pull plastic off everything, you know. And, or and just, or just any flat object, really. Just pull, just the, pull plastic. the plastic. Off. Yeah. <laughs> for 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 all your unicorns. Yeah. You could you could you, you feed your plastic to your unicorns, don't you? I saw I, 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 unicorns. I mean, unicorns. you come here and there's unicorns. I mean, <laughs> never anywhere else in the world, but here there's unicorns. Well, Ellen, thank you so much for having me on your channel. Yeah. It was really awesome to be here. I'm so proud to be here, and I'm so excited and proud of what you're doing on the base. It's fantastic, and uh, it's really cool. Yeah, and Hobak didn't get here. You know, you're right. He never showed up. He did. Wow. We did this all ourselves. We should be pretty proud of ourselves. There was no one else helping us with the cameras or the sound <laughs> or anything. We just did, we did this all ourselves, everybody. Hobak was never here. <laughs> Oh, Hovac, how you doing? <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs>